Today I'm going to go over 7 strollers that I wouldn't recommend buying used. But before I begin though, I'd like to make it clear that in general, I'm a huge proponent of secondhand models, both because in my experience, a used premium stroller will usually hold up better than a new budget stroller, but also because supporting a strong secondhand market for good durable models increases the value of those models, and as a result, pushes the whole industry in the direction of better longevity, which is good for both consumers and the environment. That being said, there are specific problems that we've struggled with for years in the workshop with the strollers we'll be looking at today that make them usually not the best choice to pick up secondhand, despite the fact that a few of them are some of our favorite models to buy new. Please note before we begin though, that this video is of course not a comprehensive list. There are definitely many other models that make for bad used purchases, but we've singled out these ones today due to their widespread popularity, often high price, and because of the extent of experience we have with working on them. So let's get started then, beginning with a stroller that's had a pretty strong presence in used markets for a long time now, the Boogaboo Chameleon, and despite its popularity, the main reason that I would warn you against buying this model used is a central locking mechanism, which has had a tendency to develop wear problems in every generation of the model, and actually, from a repair perspective, has gotten worse with each update, and which tends to break in a way that makes a stroller entirely unusable, in that either it won't lock upright or can't be folded down. Note that this problem is also quite difficult to assess before purchasing, as without opening up the actual mechanism, it's hard to determine the extent of wear that might be present, and is also incredibly difficult for the average user to fix, both in terms of the actual repair operation, but also in terms of sourcing parts. Next up is the Britax Smile, which, due to the strong sales of its first couple iterations, is quite plentiful on the used market at the moment, at least here in Europe. And the chief problems with the Smile then are that, in addition to loosening up pretty quickly in general, there are a couple of areas that tend to develop problems. First being the front wheels, where the combination of air-filled tires with an axle system involving caps and locking washers, and also quite prone to rusting, makes it often difficult to fix puncture issues without actually buying a new set of wheels. And second, being the brake system, which often fails over time, in a way where one side ceases to either engage or to release, due to the combination of a rather long wire-based system with components that haven't been supported well enough on the side opposite the pedal, and as a result, can bend or warp out of alignment, requiring the replacement of parts that are more or less impossible to get a hold of. Alright, next up is a stroller that I love, and actually feel a little bad suggesting that it shouldn't be bought used, and that's the Stoka Trails. And the truth with the model is that, despite being a great stroller in general, there are unfortunately several danger areas that need to be checked before buying, in particular now that the model's been discontinued. Key potential problems with the trails include the telescopic and folding mechanisms and the brake system, which are all areas that don't necessarily fail often, but when they do, are very hard to fix without access to original parts, as the systems are built with precisely fitted components that don't leave a lot of room for fitting DIY workarounds. And more importantly, the front wheels, whose design was shifted out in a mid-2018 update in which suspension pads were added to mitigate wear-based wobble problems. And in this case, if you accidentally buy a model produced before this update, then you'll very likely wind up with a stroller whose front wheels are apt to hang to the side, or wobble erratically to a point where they're unusable other than with the swivel locks engaged. So then, unless you really know what you're looking for, the Trails does unfortunately belong on this list, as a model that most people should avoid buying used. Moving on, we get to the Cybex Pream, a model which tends to command a bit too high a price on the secondhand market, just as it does when sold new. And the problem with getting a used Pream then is that it tends to be pretty run down after it's made it through that first child, as a result of having a lot of connection points, combined with somewhat less than impressive suspension, which together make for a pretty loose and rattly stroller a few years down the line. In addition to this, problems also sometimes develop with the internal mechanisms, in particular handle extension and folding. And while often, fixing this is just a matter of opening up the model and finding out what has come out of alignment, if you do run into something more serious than this, then know that getting spare parts or any sort of service out of Cybex for a model that's past the guarantee period is virtually impossible. In addition to this, the brake system has also been known to develop problems, at the point where the pins emerge from the rear crossbar, and unlike the folding mechanism, is not an area of the stroller that can be easily disassembled. And the Lux seat, one of the model's chief selling points, is somewhat weakly constructed, with a lot of moving parts, and is also this quite prone to loosening or braking, while also being a costly component to replace. Moving further, we get to another model that, like the Trails, I'm a big fan of for a new purchase, but feel is generally best to avoid buying used, and that's the Boogaboo Donkey, which, though it can be an absolutely indispensable asset for anyone with two stroller-aged children, and also holds up just fine for the first few years, also tends to loosen quite considerably over time, a result of having both a high carrying capacity and strong terrain capability on one hand, while on the other, also being built with the ability to contract horizontally, for use either in the mono mode, or for collapsing the model as small as possible for storage, as the cost that comes with these abilities is a wide number of connection points and hinged or telescopic mechanisms that loosen and wear down, and in the workshop, it's honestly rare to see a 
donkey, older than around the five-year mark, that's really even worth fixing, as the wear is so widespread across the chassis that it's never a matter of just replacing a couple of components. Added to this is also the fact that if the model has been used with either a buggy board or in the mono mode for prolonged periods of time with a heavier child, then there can be asymmetry problems or hidden internal wear that can be difficult to assess before buying. Alright, next up is the Epa Baby Cruise, and take note here, I'm not talking about the Cruise V2, which is an entirely different model, much more similar to the Vista than its predecessor, but the original Cruise, which, though it can be useful for a few rather specific lifestyles when bought new, is also not the best model to pick up used for a few reasons. Firstly, because it has small wheels and poor suspension, combined with a very rigid structure, meaning that the bumps from even slightly uneven ground, like rougher city streets and gravel and so on, tend to take a harder toll on the model's mechanisms over time. And also, because of the front wheels, which rely solely on plastic tags built into the wheel housings in order to mitigate wear that can lead to wobbling issues. These tags work fine, for a few years at least, when the model is new, but when they start to wear down, Problems with wobbling do very often occur, and at this point, a lot of the original cruises left on the market, at least those I've seen in the workshop, have definitely started to show their age in this regard, leaving me with a lot of doubt as to whether they would hold up long enough to take another child through their stroller years. And last up then, is the Baby Jogger City Mini, not to be confused with the City Mini GT, which makes for an awesome used purchase. The City Mini is the smallest of Baby Jogger's three-wheeled models, built on a slightly simplified, though more or less the same chassis, as its larger brethren, but with smaller wheels that tend to wear down rather quickly with regards to the foam, and more importantly, that almost always in my experience come to develop problems with the front wheel, which uses a dual wheel setup like on umbrella strollers, and which, after a year or two, starts to loosen on the axle, which can make steering a bit of a nightmare. In addition, the swivel locking mechanism is also quite susceptible to wear, and can develop a problem where it unintentionally slips into the locked position. And for these reasons, while if I'm honest I'm not too big a fan of getting this model new either, the City Mini is definitely one to avoid, even if it's only been used for a year or two, because its susceptibility to wear as far as the wheels go is simply too high. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask you subscribe, as it helps us continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.